Hey there folks, it's Brian with Foxfire Armor again. And in light of everything going on in the world right now with Russia, Ukraine, China, and everything happening here in the United States, I figured it'd be a good time to do another one of these videos. And so today we are gonna go over the five things that you need to start prepping right now. If you haven't started, these are gonna be the five things that you need to have right this minute, or you need to go out and start purchasing right this minute. So with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing, and this should be your number one priority right now on this list, is guns and ammo. Now that may seem like two things, but in reality, it is a singular item. Can't use the tool without the necessary equipment for it to function. That means you can't use a gun without the ammo. So that is gonna be the number one item on this list. Now, depending on what you're anticipating or what your environment is or local laws, that kind of stuff, that's gonna kind of dictate uh, what you're able to purchase, what you're able to get, obviously, as, as far as that item is gonna be concerned. So for those of you who can't buy an AR, which would be my preferred, and realistically it would be an AR-10, because it's a little more versatile, you can use it for bigger game hunting, and obviously it's a very versatile platform. For those of you who can't do something like that, obviously a shotgun is gonna be a decent option. Handgun, again, another decent option. I would try to avoid bolt guns, and Really, if you have to, if you're you're hurting for money and something a little bit more middle of the road is even still too expensive for you, there is always the option of older military surplus guns. So keep that in mind when you're shopping around. But at this point, this stage of the game, definitely, definitely, definitely need to pick up a gun. Now, as far as the ammo is concerned, one of the things that we're seeing right now, and we've been seeing it, it's going to continue to happen, but... I'm anticipating it to ramp up as the tension between Ukraine and Russia continues to heat up, along with the tension that's currently heating up with China and Taiwan. Recently, one of the largest import exporters in the United States was actually just taken down by a cyber attack. And they're probably, the, if, if not the largest on the East Coast, they're one of the largest on the East Coast, and they were just taken out with a cyber attack. So why does that matter? Well, a lot of our ammunition actually does come from out of the country. In particular, the big thing is gunpowder. We really don't produce a lot of gunpowder here in the United States. A lot of it comes from places like Australia. So ammo scarcity is going to become an issue again. So picking up your firearm, picking up your ammo, is gonna be hugely, hugely important at this stage in the game. All right, so the next thing on this list is gonna be food and water. And in my mind, this is number two, food and water. They go hand in hand. If you have MREs, if you have ready to eat meals, things like Mountain House, Nutrient Survival, which by the way, Nutrient Survival, fantastic company, amazing product. If you're looking into buying some survival food or long-term shelf-stable food, definitely check them out. So water, food, they're kind of required. If you need to prepare meals, you need to be able to cook, you need to be able to boil water, those two are gonna go hand in hand. And the ability to have a clean drinking source is also gonna be a part of that. So a little side uh, tangent to the food and water is gonna be water purification. And for me, that kind of just goes hand in hand when I Mention water, water, clean water, potable water, whatever you want to call it. The ability to have water for cooking, drinking, all that, it's going to be a must. It's going to be a necessity. Now, people love to talk about uh, bottled water and how it degrades over time. The reality is the amount of time it's going to take for most of that stuff to degrade to a point to where it's going to be harmful for your body, you're going to be through that water already very quickly. So having things like uh, the Water Bricks or I'm trying to remember the other name, the other company, there's a few others out there. I'll see if I can find their names and put them in the description for you. But having some sort of water storage that you can then purify your water in that container is going to be hugely, hugely beneficial to you. 
so that you don't have to take a Menards bucket and go into the creek and get yourself five gallons of water that way, then try to purify it. A nice, portable, storable water system. And if you can, collect rainwater. That's, I mean, free water, right? <clears throat> so food and water, gonna be number two on the list. Super important. Make sure that you have enough food and water to last at least, at least three months for you and your family. And the reason I say three months is because things like the pandemic, when they shut everything down, grocery stores, sh shelves were getting bare. If we continue to have supply chain disruptions and, you know, hats off to the, the trucker convoy in Canada and the trucker convoy happening right now in the United States. But the reality is that is going to hurt our supply chain even further. So <clears throat> just bear that in mind. Make sure you're, you know, stockpiling just a little bit extra every time you grocery shop. And that's going to really help you get those food stores up. All right, now the third one on the list is going to seem very basic to a lot of you out there, and that's going to be shelter. And when I talk shelter, I'm not just talking a roof over your head. I mean something that is impermeable to the outside elements as far as rain is concerned, as far as winter is concerned. If you're in one of those climates, you need to make sure that your shelter is set up for your environment and that if it boils up to 110 degrees for you, you have some way to keep your yourself and your family cool, whether that's your basement, if that stays a nice ambient temperature, or if you have some way to power a generator, which everyone should have because, hey, storms happen, power gets knocked out anyway, you should have a generator. That is what I mean by shelter. You know, going out into the woods, bugging out, sleeping in a tent, that kind of stuff. That's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about more of a permanent structure because there's really not a lot of people that actually do have a permanent structure. Now, if you're stuck in an apartment or say a condo, you're gonna have to make different concessions when it comes to this. But for those of you who have the ability, you should be in a single family home. If you're someone who's looking to prep or someone who's in the prepping community or just someone who is kind of on the fence of, well, what happens if this happens? What if this happens? It just gives you the freedom to do the things you need to do, like having a whole house generator or even just a generator to keep your refrigerator, freezer, and you know necessities charged, things like a cell phone or a ham radio if you needed to reach out to anybody. So having a shelter in place, one that is permanent stationary, that you can rely on, that is gonna be huge, 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 huge. That's why I'm going to say this over and over, probably on every single one of these. Having these five items are going to be the most important things that you can have right now with just the way the economy and the way the world is kind of currently headed. All right, so number four on the list is going to be the ability to prepare food. Now, that may seem very mundane to most people who live with modern conveniences, but ask anyone who camps on a regular, the ability to prepare your own food is an absolute necessity. Whether that's a camp stove with propane, whether that's alcohol stoves, whether that is a propane stove, or even just a grill grate that you can put on a fire outside. Being able to prepare the food that you need to prepare, boil the water that you need to boil to prepare the food, that stuff is a must. If you can't do that, you won't survive. It's as simple as that. And <clears throat> what's nice about the ability to prepare food is a lot of times this can be a dual purpose type of situation, right? You could heat your home with a wood stove or a pellet stove, and that could also be used as a cooking surface for you to boil water or to prepare whatever meals you need to prepare. Now, having multiple of these is gonna be an ideal situation. So don't put all your eggs in one basket with a wood burning stove or propane stove or dual fuel camp stove. You really need to make sure that you have multiple ways to prepare different types of food because obviously food, water are a necessity. That's why they're number two on the list. Being able to prepare those foods is just as important because without it, you can't eat. So number four on the list, it's going to be ability to prepare your food. And obviously it's going to be better if you can get something that will allow you to prepare your food, but also something that can help heat your shelter. 
right? So that's number four. Now, number five, this is not necessarily an item per se, but it is something that you could have a physical copy of, and that's a plan. And this is one of the most oversought, missed things that many early stages in preparedness community, in the security community, just everyone in general, day-to-day -day life, most people don't have a plan for the unknown. Well, you're probably asking yourself, how do you know what to plan for for the unknown? <laughs> and I know, I get it, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but the reality is you can prepare and make plans for things that are scenarios that are very likely for whether it's your area. Are you in an earthquake area? Are you in a flood zone? Are you in a fire region? Are you somewhere close to the ports where if Russia decided they could send a nuke or China send a nuke? Or are you basically somewhere where if the power grid were to go out because of a weather? Or for those of you who love the SHTF scenarios, a EMP is set off. Do you have a plan for any of that? Okay. Now, specific things are going to require different stuff. So those in Florida are going to have a different plan from those who are up in Minnesota or those who are in Arizona. So you really need to plan according to yourself, your location, and the types of scenarios that you're predicting could potentially come to fruition at some point or another. With everything going on in Ukraine, with the pressures in China and Taiwan right now, the reality is we really don't know what's going to happen as far as war is concerned, if the U.S. is going to be dragged into that. So really putting a plan together for what could be a scenario that's likely to happen to your family or, or, or to your region more specifically. So get that plan together. Make sure you have that. Make sure then you have the necessary, necessary resources to implement that plan, right? So if your plan is hey, we're, it's going to be hurricane season, we could run out of power, make sure you got the fuel for the generators, make sure you have clean water ready to go in case, um, any sort of blankets, uh, emergency heat, cooking supplies, right? All this stuff. If you're in a situation like we had with Katrina, hey, again, guns and ammo, they come into play because you never know when people start getting desperate. So if you can help, you know, help out, but you never know if you do help out that person, are they going to come back with a gang of marauders as Magic Prepper so eloquently puts all the time. <laughs> so make sure you have a plan, make sure you have the necessities to put that plan in action and make sure that you go over that plan with your family or, or those who you are going to be doing the plan with, right? That could be your mag, that could be your family, extended family, could be your neighbors. So keep that in mind. Those are going to be the five things. That's going to be it for this video. Until next time, if you enjoyed the content, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, it's Brian with Fox Fire Armory.